Hello everyone, this is Swell Toast Newbie here, back with another Star Wars Zero Republic video. Today I have for you guys another Star Wars Zero Republic sort of special video. In today's video I'm going to be soloing Explosive Conflict Story Mode. I'm going to be soloing the whole entire operation itself. I'm just going to be going over the boss fights, not really these trash mobs. And yeah, honestly it is a... I say it's kind of difficult, but at the same time it is really cool just to see these strategies that I kind of figured out just to go ahead and solo this operation. So I hope you guys enjoy this Star Wars Republic video. As always, if you guys enjoy these videos, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the video. Alrighty guys, but the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to go ahead and actually fight the trash right here. And I'm going to try to fight the trash mobs at the very start, just to show it off. Then I'm going to probably, you know, skip to the bosses because I don't want to just constantly record the whole entire thing. Because I don't want this to be a, you know, a little two hour special because that's going to be absolutely insane. And I mean, it's kind of boring when you're fighting trash mobs, but... Yeah, I mean, this is uh, Explosive Conflict Story Mode. I'm going to be uh, soloing it. The only way that I could get in here is by having a, another character, as you can tell. I just decided to name that character Kefis Lives. And yeah, I mean, that's what I'm going to be doing right now. I'm just going to go ahead and actually uh, solo this operation. And I've only managed to do it... Or actually, I managed to do it once, and I did make a guide a while ago. It wasn't the best of quality, but I said that it was impossible to solo you know, the whole entire Explosive Conflict story mode. But obviously I was wrong and I figured that out, I guess say two months ago I figured that out and then I just decided to make a video just now about it. And I understand that I'm still currently sick, but I decided, you know, this video cannot wait. I'm just, I've been just hyping it up every now and then. I've just been putting hints about it and I know it would be absolutely awesome to go ahead and do this. So, go ahead and just try to kill this mercenary right here. Yeah, I understand that it may be a problem, but like I said, I'm going to be editing out I say most of the trash mobs fights and whatnot, so yeah, that's gonna be uh, one thing right there. I'm also gonna try not to I say commentate about just random stuff. There's gonna be mostly commentary about the whole entire fight since like I said I don't wanna talk about random stuff, so that's just the whole entire idea of this, you know, kinda big video. I'm actually gonna go ahead and kill the spider droid and then you know, I'm gonna skip to the whole entire boss since like I said I don't want to just no kill this trash mob since these are the really easy trash mobs. They require almost no skill. Just go ahead and just attack them. And yeah, I mean, that's just all it takes for this you know, little spider droid right here. It does nothing. Alrighty, guys. We are at the first bosses right here. So as you can tell, it is Toth and Zorn. Now, the strategy for this boss fight is I like to normally, I guess, say, take out Zorn. For the most part, that he is a bit of a nuisance when you're trying to attack him. You know, when you're trying to solo this. You may be wondering, the debuff, yes, it does show up, but it won't mess up like in hard mode and nightmare. Because if it's in hard mode, or actually hard mode and nightmare, then these, uh, I guess say these two droughts right here will actually just go haywire and you can't damage them. So, yeah, that's kind of the strategy right here. Just kind of have to go ahead and just deal with them for the most part. Yeah, let's go ahead and just try to attack them right here. I'm actually going to try to kill Zorn, like I said. It is a bit repetitive. This, yeah, I guess to say that this... Boss fight's a bit repetitive, but compared to the others, you know, it's a bit interesting. So, I mean, like I said, I don't like the boss fights where you just kind of, you know, run around and do stuff. But, I mean, that's kind of what happens with the first boss fight in Explosive Conflict, and when you're actually soloing it. So, go ahead and just try to waste all our defenses right here. Not really defensive, actually waste all our offensive cooldowns. Just go ahead and just try to DPS them as fast as possible, like I said. And I will edit some of the boss fights a bit since, like I said, I don't want this to be a huge video since, I mean, that would be really boring just to constantly watch just someone attacking them, but I have to face Zorn right here and then Toth, of course, so let me just go ahead and just continue to attack them right here. So as you can tell, Zorn is getting kind of low. I mean, he's not doing too much. He's just kind of, you know, attacking me for no reason, just trying to kill me. It isn't working out too well for him. So as you can tell, he's kind of getting low at this point. I mean, for the most part, he just kind of kind of run around. Because they sometimes do this ability right here, as you can tell. You know, they just try to scream at you while the other just, you know, hits the ground and just try to get, I say, little spikes to go ahead and kill you. And since there's only one person in here, that makes it really simple to go ahead and avoid. So go ahead and just try to do this right here. So go ahead and just try to hit him right there. All right. Go ahead and see what we can do. Another strategy that I did not mention right here, I actually don't plan on mentioning, is that once Toth, if you do actually DPS him down first instead, then what can happen is he can do an infinite, I would say, a little ability where he hits the ground, and then you can go ahead and just actually keep him in rage. Just don't hit the whole entire spikes, and you'll be good. 
But you know, I decided I'm not going to use that strategy right now. I'm going to do the whole entire strategy. Oh, actually, he still does that. I forgot about that. So when you do this right here, now I think the strategy that I personally do is just go ahead and just attack him while he's doing that, since it all comes down to I'm getting attacked by one Drauk, and at the point I can go ahead and actually move them away so they don't get that buff. So it's just really OP right here. Go ahead and just leave Toth right there. Leave Zorn up. I mean, he's really low, but you can go ahead and actually DPS Toth a bit before you try to take down Zorn. But yeah, it is a really common strategy. I know that some people do use this strategy, considering the fact that it's really simple. And when they do enrage, it won't be as bad, since you can get a double and a triple enrage if you just go ahead and, you know, you kill one and then leave the other up. So let's go ahead and just continue on right here. Just actually, I'm going to try to continue to DPS Toth, and then eventually I'm going to go ahead and just switch to Zorn and just clean him up and kill him. So yeah, this is just really nice. I mean, it's kind of good that Bioware implemented this, because it helps us a lot when you're trying to solo the operations. But at the same time, I can see how this could be abused if you just have some extra DPS time if you were to do it. So I mean, once it comes out, and it just comes out with level 60 slash level 65, I think this will be really good because this strategy can still be used in a way. I mean, it's not the best, but if you're just low on DPS and or you're actually like fast on DPS in one drought, then you can go ahead and just, you know, waste some time and just go ahead and just do this right here. So he is do just doing his little infinite charge. As you can tell, they're both in rage at this point since I did not kill them fast enough. Now what I do right here is, like I said, he's not doing anything too much. I mean, Toth is like doing nothing. So once it gets to a double enrage, I might just have to kill Zorn and then leave Toth up to take him out, or actually take him on alone. So let's go ahead and just continue to heal ourselves. Since, like I said, this is another strategy. You have to try and heal yourself and not get seen by them. Because trust me, they can really, really start to hurt. So All right, let's go ahead and just see what we can do right here. Just go ahead and, you know, use some defensive sense. If I do take hits, then it's going to hurt a lot. So, all right, they are getting way more powerful. So let's go ahead and just keep them away since... That will really start to hurt, even with an enrage on that little ability. I mean, they don't take less damage like they're supposed to in story mode, but they still do a very increased damage. So, I'm just going to go ahead and just continue to run away right here. Right, there we go, just take out Toth right here. So, as you can tell, they're almost both dead, and there's only one enrage, so this is really, really good. Let's go ahead and just try to go ahead and, yeah. Yeah, I, just, I don't even know what I was about to say there, but... Alright, he's still doing the ability. Like I said, it's just too OP. This is the best strategy for the try to solo this boss right here. Go ahead and just see what else we can do right now. I honestly don't know. This is just too fun, too nice. Alright. Go ahead and just try to. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually clean up Toth first. I just want to do that because why not. So sorry Zorn, but you're going to have to go ahead and die last right now. There we go. Kill him. And then now we have Zorn that is still alive and is about to be very OP. So let's go ahead and do that. Just kill him before that happens. Go ahead and get a med pack once again. And now, of course, we do have the final boss area. Let's say the final boss itself, the handler that actually keeps the whole entire... You no, know, Drax in order, but sadly, he is just going to die today. All right, go ahead and just use all our defensives and whatnot that we still have. I mean, we don't really have defensives as a you know commander once they're all let up. So go ahead and just try to DPS him fast since, you know, he does almost nothing. And honestly, this is the really easy boss. I mean, just really simple. Even when it, when you're actually doing with eight people and you're at level 50, this was still super easy right here. So there we go. Now he's dead. Go ahead and see what we got. All right, we got a schematic. We got some extra gear. I mean, you can still sell that for around 10k, the gear itself. So that's pretty good. So I guess I'll see you guys at the second boss. Alrighty, guys. We have made it to the second boss right here. As you can tell... So currently we do have the Firebrand and the Stormcaller tank. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm actually going to try to deep th actually DPS them down for the most part. Is they kind of close to each other, but at the same time I'm going to try to do some uh, tactics right here. So what I'm going to do is actually attack uh, the Stormcaller tank first. And I'm going to go off to the side and, you know, try to attack the Firebrand tank to go ahead and see what I can do. All right, he is trying to use double destruction. That's not good. Go ahead and just try to do that right there. All right. You can eat the double destruction, as you can tell. So, I mean, it's pretty nice, but at the same time, you just got to keep in mind that something can sometimes happen. So, all right, there we go. Let's actually kind of run away from this. And the strategy right here is to try to get them close to each other. Not, I would say, the whole entire way to go ahead and just try to DPS one down and leave the other the opposite way. Because what I'm going to try to do today is actually try to go ahead and just DPS them down 
to about halfway to each other and then just burn the Stormcaller tank and then focus on the Firebrand. But at the same time, that can be risky because if the Firebrand tank does enrage, if he does actually manage to get some hits on you that don't resist, it can be it can be definitely something. I mean, you can die pretty easily. So, all right, let's go ahead and just try to do that right there. There we go, all right. I do try to kill these guys because it is kind of pointless to leave them up as they're very annoying. So, go ahead and just try to kill this one right there. All right. And now we're going to go back to the Firebrand tank. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with this guy. I mean, he's not doing too much to us. He's honestly just kind of, you know, looking at us, just trying to kill us and whatnot. And that's obviously what they're both trying to do right here, but... Alright, go ahead and just try to get some hits on him. Alright, he's going to be using Incinerate Armor. Now, I mean, you shouldn't have to worry too much about this, because like I said, it is level 50. It is a level 50 op, so... It's no big deal, but... I mean, at the same time, you do have to notice that it can become a problem if you're not careful, so... I'm actually going to go ahead and just try to heal myself. Since every now and then, you are going to have to do th that, so... I'd recommend, if you're a Sentinel or a Marauder, I'd recommend getting the, I guess, say, Dot Specs so you can go ahead and heal yourself because, yeah, sometimes you can take some serious damage. Let me actually hold the line out since I do not want that double destruction. Alrighty, guys, we are at the halfway point of this whole entire fight. As you can tell, the DPS is actually kind of even right here. So I'm going to try to slow down the DPS on Firebrand. I'm going to go ahead and just get a few extra hits on him and I'm going to stop hurting him entirely. So go ahead and just try to get some extra hits right there. All right. Just see what we can do right here. Now I'm going to go back to the Storm Color Tank and just see what I can do. Like I said, I mean, the strategy here is not to get them to both enrage, since that can be just a disaster. So let's go ahead and just try to burn the one right here. I'm going to try to take out the Storm Color Tank quickly. As I mean, the Firebrand one won't be too bad. I mean, Firebrand is pretty simple when it is enraged. So let's go ahead and just continue to hit them. They are going to use their final offensive system in a second, so... Yeah, that's pretty good right there, and now we will get the final one out of the way. That will be all from there. Just go ahead and just burn them. All right, there we go. Now it is activated. So I'm just going to go ahead and take out the extra ads, and then I'm going to finish up this tank right here. All right, there we go. We do have the uh, shooters right here. Now, the strategy that I have is just go ahead and just, you know, try to AoE them and then deal with it when it's not enraged. Since I don't want to go ahead and clean up these guys because just resisting tons of enemies... I mean, as simple as it sounds, it can be somewhat difficult eventually, so go ahead and just try to overall just get some hammer shots when they're taking 90% less damage, so go ahead and just try to do some stuff to them. Alright, there we go. I'm going to try to clean up these ads so they don't become a problem later on, because you never know. Alright, there we go. And then we have one more ad that could still be a threat, and there we go. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and just try to DPS Firebrand while I'm walking over, just go ahead and just use... No, optimize my whole entire time since they're likely about to enrage since I haven't killed them fast enough. Alright, there we go. And now it's time to go ahead and clean up the Stormcaller tank. There we go. We have to quickly clean this guy up. Otherwise, this is going to be a disaster. I'm going to actually have to heal myself a lot. Right, there we go. It is starting to become a disaster. It's starting to, as you can tell, it's starting to, you know, start to take a toll. I mean, we're starting to take tons of damage. So, go ahead and just try to clean this guy up. There we go. They are enraged. This is not good. Now this is the part where you have to go ahead and just try to burn Storm Caller as fast as possible and hope that you don't die. Alright, there we go. Just go ahead and just clean them up right there. Normally what they'll do is they'll do their little enrage. Alright, there we go. I mean, I got hit by that. But I did resist it, luckily. Oh man, that was close. Normally you don't actually resist that. There's sometimes a chance that you won't resist that. And I guess that just happened. I mean, that was just pure luck right there. And now the strategy right here is to actually hide when he's enraged. I mean, it's a pretty simple strategy. And then you go ahead and just clean up these ads, and then it's all good from there. I mean, that's only happened once or twice where he's actually managed to get a double destruction on me while enraged. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty good right there. And that's to just actually time to go ahead and hide behind this and just try to overall DPS. Since this is his enraged ability, he just constantly does this and then goes back to a normal. But... Normally people are supposed to die at this part right here, so... Obviously, since you're level 60, you will take a lot less damage, so... No, it is alright if you're actually going to go ahead and just face him at this stage. Alright. Go ahead and just continue to attack him under the shield, since... You know, you won't take damage, but now we will, so... If he does manage to get us when we aren't resisting, then this could be bad as well, since we can likely take tons of damage. Go ahead and just continue to attack him right here, alright? Kind of stay away from the tank, you know, I just want to stay away from him. Actually, go ahead and use the shield. Just so if he does manage to get one, it won't insta-kill me. Alright, there we go. Now it just comes down to complete luck on this boss fight right here. And it looks like that it is just 
game over for the tank right now. He is obviously dead. And there we go. We actually managed to take damage on that last hit. We took almost nothing, though, from his enrage. So, yeah, there we go. The second boss is down, as you can tell. We got another. Well, we actually managed to get the decoration. I already own two of these, though. So, I guess I'll just go ahead and just leave that for later. I'll probably donate to the guild or anything. I don't know. But, yeah, I guess say that was the second boss right there. And I will see you guys at the third. Alrighty guys, we are now at the third boss out of four right here, as you can tell, in Explosive Conflict Solo. Now this is definitely a very difficult boss fight right here. The last two in this whole entire thing is actually very difficult to solo. Now this is usually meant for eight people slash two people to do. You know, I'm going to be doing it today with only me, so let's go ahead and just start the boss fight off right now. Now as you can tell, he has the turret charge. That is basically his enrage timer for the minefield. And what we're going to want to do is just go ahead and actually get up here. For the most part, for the start, I'm going to go ahead and actually go with the rundown of how this whole entire idea works right here. You have to go ahead and actually click all of these just to see what you get. They aren't loading up at the start just yet. I'm actually going to leave this guy right here. Go ahead and just try to get them all here. I'm actually going to try this row right here since this can become a bit of a task. I mean, it can become very difficult. And wow, that's actually a really good row right there of just green. But sadly, you need to go ahead and just try to get a green somewhere. There we go. We're going to have to go with this row, sadly, because you will see in a second why. Go ahead and just try to get this, since this is going to be the one we have to go with. So I'm going to actually have to go ahead and just activate all these. And like I said, there is a reason for all this, and you will soon see why. So go ahead and just try to activate them all. And the enrage time on here is actually a bit annoying, but at the same time, it can be very careful. And also the fire can be very uh, deadly as well. You can really die from that at level 60. So you have to be very careful about that. Right, we do have a green right there. Sadly, we do not have one. But I think we can actually make up from this if we're careful. Go ahead and just activate them all right there. There we go. We have some green. All right. Click that right there. Okay. Just see what we can do. And there we go. We have our minefield to set up. I'm actually going to go ahead and see this guy. Now, I'm going to try to see what I can do. All right, let's see right here. All right, so we do have that row right there, so that can actually help us in a way. Go ahead and just try to get the droid. Now, this is going to be very risky right here. Let's go ahead and just try to find him. All right, there he is. Now, I'm going to have to go to the first area right here. There we go. We're at the droid. And sadly, I'm going to have to go ahead and just risk it right here. And I'm going to have to go ahead and just switch to the side and get it. So let's go ahead and just try to do this right here. All right. The good thing about story mode is that there isn't a little strategy of where they completely delete the mines like in nightmare mode and hard mode. So that's pretty useful. But sadly, this guy right here will enrage. Slash the whole entire minefield will enrage itself. So all right, there we go. Just go ahead and get him right here. I'm only going to cut the video after I show you guys the strategy. So yeah, that's something. Let me go ahead and just try to get this guy right here. There we go, we do have the fire once again. You do not want to touch that. Alright, there we go. He is just here right now. He's sadly going to have to enrage, likely, if I'm not careful right here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm going to leave him up until the next fire debuff does show up. Because if you get caught in that, then you're likely to die. And this guy is not too bad when he's enraged. So, let me just go ahead and just leave him up right here. Just wait until the next fire. I mean, it's a bit of a task. i say for the most part, it is a task. Alright, there we go. Once again, once the time comes, I'm going to have to go ahead and kill this probe droid right here. Go ahead and interrupt that. All right. It looks like it's almost done, and then I'm going to have to kill him right here. All right, there we go. Just go ahead and just bring him up here. There we go. We do have the landmine defusal kit. We do have 40 seconds on it, so we do have more than enough time. Okay, we are going to have to wait for this. Right, I'm going to have to try to luckily heal myself because I'm going to get hit with the fire either way at this point. So... Yeah, there we go. We got hit with it. So we're going to have to sadly, you know, try to heal ourselves for the most part. Otherwise, this is going to be a death right here. All right, there we go. As you can tell, I did take tons of damage. So let's go ahead and just try to kill this guy right here. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and we have... Fi yeah, we actually have 15 seconds. So go and just get that mine right there. Then jump down, and there we go. We have something right there. So that's kind of the strategy, and I'll just go ahead and continue to do that. All right, guys, we are almost done the minefield, as you can tell. So the strategy for the last one is you're going to have to use hold the line and or a speed buff. You're going to have to skip the second to last one. That's why you have to have a green one at the very end so you can actually clear the minefield. Since it is basically impossible in the whole entire game to go ahead and actually run that distance and actually defuse the bomb in the 15 seconds you have. 
Let's go ahead and just try to clean up the last droid that we're luckily going to have to kill. Let's go ahead and just try to get him right here, alright? Now I'm going to go ahead and just wait over here, let the fire go, and let this guy enrage. Alright, go ahead and just see. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually wait again, just so I will be able to survive. So, I just kill the adds and hurt the droid some more, alright? There we go. He is almost dead, so I'm going to go ahead and actually try to stop the DPS a bit. Alright, is the, uh, yeah, it's about to come down, so... Go ahead and run over here. He does de-aggro if you stand over here for too long, so... I have to go ahead and just try to use all my heals since I'm luckily going to get hit with the fire. Oh, no, I didn't, so... Alright, here we go. This is going to be very tough. Alright, there we go. Just go ahead and just run. We're going to have to go quickly, just everything. Alright, there we go. Hold the line. It's still going. Ten seconds left. Alright, we have five seconds. Yes, we do. Alright, three, two, one, and we've made it. There we go. Go ahead and deactivate it. Go ahead and just do that. There we go. The minefield is done. Alrighty guys, I'm still managing to attack him, so since he has no other target, he will just honestly just stay on you. I don't recommend attacking the turrets because they can be a pain, so I'm just going to go ahead and actually leave them up. Since even after you do finish this boss fight, you should go ahead and just leave them alone. Because if you do die on Kephis, then they will just completely despawn, so... Yeah, I don't even bother with them, I just actually attack the uh, guy himself, you know, the puzzle boss. And, like I said, I mean, like I said, you can just even see, like, his enrage timer is just huge. So it's not really that bad. I mean, honestly, you have to go ahead and just continue to attack him. Just no big deal. He's going to activate the turrets again, but that's going to have no use because they already are activated. So, okay, let's go ahead and just continue to attack him right here. I mean, this boss fight, most part, the puzzle is very interesting, but at the same time, the boss fight right here at the end is... That's yeah, a bit disappointing. After all that stuff, you just have to fight this guy, which is, you know, pretty sad. I mean, he's just pathetic. So let's go ahead and just try to finish him off right here. Go ahead and get get some fire on him, because you know he's going to be on fire. There we go, just go ahead and just continue to attack him. He's going to constantly use this grenade, that's also no big deal. There we go. And as you can tell, he's not even enraged yet. He might enrage, I'm not sure, but the last time I did this, I'm pretty sure he did not enrage. I'm pretty sure he has a huge timer, so... Even if he does, I mean, it's no big deal, but it is fun, just for a little DPS race, if you do manage to actually fight this guy and not fill the minefield. So I'll go ahead and just try to do this again. There we go, to see what we can do. Alright, so go ahead and continue to attack him. He's going to throw another grenade, because why not? Bam, there we go, and now he's going to use another explosive round as well, wow. Alright, and now we are back to uh, square one, and we're down to the whole entire, you know, the final boss himself, you know, Kephis. I didn't tell the title, Kephis Lives, I mean, he's just even here, so... Yeah, we're going to have to go ahead and just get revenge on Kephis for doing this, just, you know, trapping us here and just trying to do some stuff. As you can tell, after you kill him, the whole entire minefield is cleared. We just managed to do all of it. If you didn't know what I did at the end, you just have to stand on the top of that. Actually, let me go ahead and try to get back to it. Let's see if it's even possible before I do skip to the final boss of Kefis just to solo him. But, alright, let me go ahead and get back so I can show you guys if it does. Yeah, it still goes back up and down, so that's pretty good. I'm actually going to go ahead and just try to wait for him. And then, actually, I'm going to have to try to wait for the whole entire little elevator right here. Okay, there we go. It is coming back down. So the trick here is just to try to get one of the top layers to have a green itself. Do not... I'm pretty sure you shouldn't have the last one a green. Just try to get a green on the first three. And then just constantly go up through it, as you can tell right here. You have the mind status, and then you can use the probe launcher. As seen here, doesn't even work after you beat it. I didn't know that. But after you do that, you can manage to just find a droid, attack him, climb up here, just get on this railing, click the one that you want, just actually angle your camera... Hit it and then just use whatever speed you have and then get to it. And I mean, it's over overall, it's pretty simple. I mean, it seems somewhat difficult at the start, but after you get the hang of it, it is no big deal. So I guess I will see you guys at the final boss, Kefis himself, and yeah. Alrighty, guys, we are down to the main event right here. So I'm not going to try to go ahead and jump cut most of this because this is like the main boss right here. I mean, the. Compared to the other ones, they're pretty straightforward, but this one is just mechanic heavy. And it overall is the most difficult boss fight that I have. I guess say, considering the fact that I've only soloed most of the operations, besides, you know, some of the older bosses, like the puzzle boss in EV and KP itself, I mean, I haven't had too much time to go ahead and just do that, but, I mean, other than that, you can't really solo those, but you can solo this boss fight right here. But this is by far the most difficult boss that you can solo. I guess say in the game right now at your level 60 level. 
And you'll see why in a second. Or I say in a few minutes, obviously. But, yeah, obviously we're going to have to go ahead and just try to take out these guys right here. And, yeah, this is going to be going to be definitely a ride. I also can't play the music in this because it is just copyrighted like crazy. I know that the music that plays in this boss fight right here is copyrighted. And I know that some people have gone, you know, copyright strikes from it. So, go ahead and just try to do some stuff right here. I did turn up the game volume, though, a bit so you can hear... No, just the little, they say laser sounds or whatnot. I mean, it's no big deal, but other than that. Alright, another thing that's good about this is the fact that these droids right here, even though they do calibrate, at the same time, they don't actually become OP and invincible, which is very useful. Well, it seems like there's a bunch of game lag that's going on out of nowhere. I don't know why this is happening, but... Alright, go ahead and just try to interrupt that, because this is starting to hurt a ton. Alright, there we go. I have to go ahead and just try to run away right here. There we go. Go ahead and just try to get a hit on him. Yeah, he's at 8. He is just completely calibrated, and it's going to hurt a ton. Go ahead and just try to do that again. Oh, man, he is starting to do some serious damage. He is fully calibrated. Okay, I'm going to have to go ahead and just try to interrupt his next shot right there. All right. Go ahead and just try to see what I can do. I'm going to have to regen and heal after this, because for the most part, this is going to start to really hurt. All right, there we go. We do have adrenaline rush, though, so we won't die here. There we go. Go ahead and just try to do that. I mean, we can try to DPS him, but this is not going to be easy. There we go. Just go ahead and just try to get some hits on him. All right. There we go. I am risking a lot, though, by doing this. All right. There we go. Just continue to get some hits on him. All right. There we go. And I'm about to die. Like I said, this is not worth it. There we go. Go ahead and just try to heal ourselves to the full capacity, and I'm going to have to go ahead and just try to go under it. All right, there we go. We do have some time, as you can tell. Ten seconds. But this is going to be very risky as well, so... All right, there we go. Go ahead and just try to risk it. Go under it. Will it work? There we go. Oh, man. Will we die? Will we die? This is just the whole entire topic. All right, there we go. Go ahead and just try to get hits, but now he is going to be down right there, so go ahead and just try to run away from them. Just try to do a bit of DPS. Then get some heals right there. All right. All right. Now we have to go ahead and just try to deal some damage to him. Right there. Go ahead and just kill them all. Yeah, you do have to sadly skip it out, though. I do skip out on a few of them because you do have to heal overall from the first phase. Now we do have a rest break. As you can tell, we didn't do too much damage to him, but that is okay because we do have more than enough time because he is sadly going to enrage. And there we go, we do have the warrior right here, just trying to do some stuff. And now the shield is down, so it is time to go ahead and just try to take them out. Looks like he's trying to go ahead and target something else. He's just targeting, let's go ahead and see that. Yeah, he's targeting a friendly enemy, so yeah, that's pretty useful. Go ahead and just try to kill them all right now. I'm just trying to save time. I'm not trying to go ahead and just try to DPS rush them. So there we go, alright. I do want to regen my cells themselves, so... Go ahead and just try to run away from this guy. Alright, there we go. And then finally kill him right there. And now let's go ahead and just kill these guys and then release the second bomber. So, Alright, there we go. He's going to spawn in. He actually spawned in right behind us. Wow. That is very useful. Go ahead and just try to use that right there since we don't want to waste all our cells just yet. Okay, I'm not going to try to waste the Electronet. I'm going to try to waste it on the boss itself. So there we go. Alright. Okay, he is almost done for though. 10 seconds to kill him, and there we go. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and just get my charges all up. There we go, full health. Go ahead and get the charge. And now we're going to go in and for the kill. Alright. There we go, get that on him. And there we go, he is down. Go ahead and just try to get all the hits on him. Get as much as we can. I'm going to do too much DPS since we are one person. It's going to take a while, but that's also a struggle of being burst damage since we aren't going to do too much damage to this guy right here. We're only doing burst, so... There we go, just go ahead and... Wow, that's a weird glitch. Alrighty, guys, Kefis is now going to come out now that we've completed the final phase right there. Alright, so he's now going to kind of step down, just get out of the tank. There we go. Let's just go ahead and say hi to our friend Kefis. There he is, the man himself. Kefis does live, but we're going to have to try to take him out. Alright, where's the bomber? There he is, alright. Gonna have to try to DPS him fast, though. Right here. Alright, go ahead and just try to get some hits on him. There we go. We are going to have to DPS him fast here. There we go. Just go ahead and just try to use some keybinds right here. Just go ahead and just DPS him faster. 
there we go. Now we just have him all set up. Now we're going to have to have Kefis just kind of follow us around. Very annoying, but at the same time, we are going to have to deal with it. All right. Go ahead and just try to do some stuff. We are going to have to take damage from him, though. All right, there we go. We do have the tank down once again. All right, there we go. We're going to have to DPS it a bit more. Not really faster, because we're going to have to do this multiple times in order to take down the tank. Since the tank is not the problem, it's the easy part. All right. Go ahead and just try to continue to get hits on him. All right, now it's going to go back up once again. Wow, none of those registered in time. That's sad. All right, go ahead and just try to get another hit once again. There we go. Just go ahead and just use that. Just increase our damage a bit. All right, looks like he's trying to do some more stuff. Kefis is still following us, obviously. All right, DPS is going to be a bit slower, I guess, say, in the next rounds because the tank is going to enrage soon. So there we go. We now do have uh, some extra heals, so that's pretty good. Alright, he's going up. He's leaving us alone for a second. We also have another bomber on us once again. That's weird. Alright, so he did spawn out of, let's say, the wrong area. That's weird. That is just insane. We're going to have to let this bomber live. And he's going to do a lot of damage, but... Alright, go ahead and just continue to attack the droid slash walker itself. Alright, there we go. Looks like he's going back up. It's gonna take, yeah, it's gonna take two more and then the walker is going to be down. Sadly, this guy is going to live and he might do a ton of damage. Oh, he didn't. That's lucky. Alright, go ahead and just continue to attack Kefis while we wait. Now it's gonna be a real challenge. Now this is where the challenge does start. Okay, guys, we are down to the last bomb, as you can tell. Alright, looks like we are going to take some serious damage. Looks like he's trying to do some stuff as well. Oh man, this is gonna be... It's going to be definitely very difficult. Alright, go ahead and just use our charges right here. Hopefully we will survive this bombing run. There we go. Go ahead and just get a hit. And there we go. He is down once again. Just try to take him out right here. Go ahead. There we go. There we go. Just go ahead and just try to kill him. Yes, we are done. We are just officially done. I'm going to go ahead and leave that last Beridium bomber up. Now we just have to take down Kefis, the man himself. Now this is the most difficult part. Actually, that was the most difficult part right there. Now, this is pretty straightforward. But when he enrages, it's going to be a huge problem because he can do some serious damage, Kefis himself. So, all right, there we go. The bomber's down. We don't have to deal with him anymore. And now it's just all down to me versus Kefis. Man, he is just going to get totally destroyed right here. He's just going to get totally wrecked. All right. There we go. He's going to use his special attack. Just go ahead and just try to just kill me. Yeah, I'm just going to try to kite him around for the most part. Alright, so there we go. Looks like we're going to have to try to use our Electronet once again to kill him a bit faster. Because trust me, when he is enraged, he is going to actually be very deadly. So it's really good that I did manage to kill the Walker before this guy enraged. Because if he did, then trust me, their combo can basically just wipe you completely. So, alright. There we go. Now he's enraged. It's going to be a bit easier now that we only have one enraged enemy in here. But even if this is story, obviously this is story mode, but even with story mode, this is still difficult. I'm going to have to go ahead and just try to use all my charges because this guy can hurt. Because that special attack, if you don't resist it when he's in reach, all right, there we go, we did it. There we go, just go ahead and just let him use Gift of the Masters. And now it is the last part of the boss fight, the very end. There we go, just go ahead and use Breath of the Masters. Run away for a bit so he doesn't get that insta-kill hit. And then, uh, there we go, now we just have to go ahead and run away. Just kind of break out of these stuns if he tries to get you with them as well, because he can really start to be annoying. All right, there we go. He's just trying to kill us. And then, of course, another Breath of the Masters comes out once again. Alrighty, guys, but I didn't catch the moment, but Kefis is now dead. As you can tell, I did manage to kill him solo. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this little special of EC Story Mode, just me soloing the whole entire operation. As always, if you guys enjoy the videos, then make sure to leave a like. And subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.